Father, this morning we thank you. Lord, and we sing that if you want our hearts, you have got them. If you want our dreams, you have them. You want our plans, you have them, Father. There's nothing that we can withhold from you, Father. Have your way, have, your, have our hearts as they are, Father God. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for the delay. I was actually online. I thought I was online. So now I'm trying to send the links and I see I'm not coming up. So I realize, uh oh, I don't think I am online. Then I see a message from my sister in Zambia saying, what's going on? Are we not connecting? Then I realized, gee, I'm alone. I'm having devotions alone. So I had to restart. Then my computer was having a cold day. You know, it's winter now. So even the uh, gadgets are feeling cold. But anyway, we thank God that this is the day that we have made, that we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. So anyway, we are looking at the reason for our problems. Re the reason for our problems, the reason why you keep on going through this problem, the reason why this issue that you thought was dealt with has resurfaced or it keeps on recurring. It's what we call spiritual welfare. I'm not trying to promote the enemy and all his, um, his tactics, but... I'm just trying to make us aware. Yesterday, I was actually thinking that, you know, I, I pray that nobody thinks that I'm trying to promote the enemy. Because normally when you're doing devotions, you are supposed to be encouraging people and so forth. Um, and so I'm looking at the word over and over that I have to share. And I believe that there is encouragement. There is an alertness. So we, our eyes are being alerted or open to what is happening out there so that we are aware of the enemy's schemes. And then, you know, there is an encouragement from the Lord. All right. So our scripture that we are basing our devotions on this week is Ephesians 6 verses 12, for which, which says, For we wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked, um, spiritual wickedness in high places. And yesterday I went in and spoke about the, the principalities, the powers against and I, the rulers. And I saw a comment or a question that said, can we please look at uh, principalities and territories? You know, so before we go into... Uh, signs. I said yesterday that we are going to look at signs that you are in a spiritual warfare. Let me just talk just a little bit on uh, the principalities and the powers. So principalities and powers are high demonic chains of command that control the affairs of the dark world. These forces operate both in the spiritual world and in the physical. Principalities and powers are demonic agents sent by the devil to afflict God's children in this world. So this thing is a reality. They are sent by the enemy, the devil, and uh, and um, all his things, you know, in the world today is a result of this um, is a result of these principalities and the powers, all the problems, all the issues that we see. It's a result of the enemy and his people or his, his angels, his demons, whatever it is. The devil, remember, he's a spirit and so is God. All right. So God wants to dwell in you and me, which he does. He's a spirit. So does the enemy. Also, there is a battle. He also wants to have those that can work for him. So he has got people. He's got agents that just work for him and they do for him. I'm sure you have heard of all these testimonies of people that were saving in his kingdom. And now they've repented and those they will give your testimony and they'll say it's real. So I don't know why us believers, we kind of just 
brush it aside and we say that it doesn't it it's it's not real but it is real it's him and all his shenanigans uh in the world is a result of these principalities the powers they are responsible for the wickedness in high places they are the force behind all the nonsense the corruption the filthiness of the world what Ever you can think of the devil is the god of this world that is what we establish the god with a small g the small g the bible says it he's the god of this world and he rules the world through his principalities and his powers scriptures that you can read uh john 12 verses 31 and also uh chapter 14 verses 30 and then chapter 16 verses 11 now territorial spirit territorial spirit remember before i even go to territorial spirit yesterday i said he so organizes got a strategy you know the bible the scripture that we read it says principalities powers and rulers of darkness all right so they will he knows exactly who to assign where based on whatever so now territorial spirits is the idea that certain demonic spirits have responsibility over a specific geographical area. In this concept found, is this concept found in the Bible you are asking? We'll look at two scriptures. So I think you have, you have seen whereby they say, oh, this place is bad. There's always accidents here. There's always accidents. They are territorial spirits that are in operation in that area. So you talk about premature death, people that die in these accidents or something always terribly have territorial spirits. Okay, so some some teach that territorial spirits are biblical concept based on some patches, some passages that mention evil spirits operating in targeted regions. For example, in Daniel chapter 10 verses 13, where we know that uh, an angel tells Daniel, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me for I was there. I was left there with the king of Persia. One or more spirits appear to have focused on Persia in this case. So Michael came. So can you see the enemy has sent his, his, his angel, but God also sent his angel to go and rescue Daniel. Another example can be found when Jesus encountered a man controlled by evil spirits, the one that I spoke about yesterday when I was saying that there is no need to entertain evil spirits or demons whereby you start asking the person, how many are you in there and what, what nonsense? No, I said yesterday that Jesus only, uh, these demons, okay, uh, Jesus confronted uh, these demonic um demon possessed person and the demons they you know when jesus confronted them it says they begged him earnestly not to send them out of there not to send them out of the country out of their territory you know that's another scripture found in mark you can read mark chapter 5 from verses 1 to 20 giving you examples and these things now like this scripture in mark this is now in the New Testament. So you can't even come and argue and say, oh, well, in Daniel, it is in the Old Testament and we are under now the New Testament. There is no such thing. There is an example. Okay. So these spirits appear to focus on one area and did not desire to leave. They didn't want, they were begging, don't send us out. So it is out there. So they are territorial spirits sent to control affairs of every territory. The physical is controlled by spiritual Nothing happens by accident, my brother, my sister. Nothing happens by accident. Every evil happening in any environment is triggered by evil territorial spirits or demons. Also, when good things happen in an environment, it is equally triggered by good territorial spirits. And that's uh, the angels. And that's our God. That's, you know, like we can see where Prince Michael comes in to help Daniel. These territorial spirits are wicked spirits from the enemy the ones from the enemy they are responsible for increased rate of violence mm? some areas are just violent violence you know even some cities are full of gambling those are territorial spirits you know violence and all manner of crimes in our cities they are responsible for rape you know serial killings armed robberies scoutism all these things are controlled by territorial spirits so 
but rather speaking, rather than seeking out evil spirits to battle, the Christian life is about seeking maturity in Christ. Believers are called to be a light, so that is what we are trying to do. Believers are called to be a light and take spiritual conflict seriously. First Peter 5 verses 8 to 9 is another scripture to consult here. But uh, we are so we are called to be uh, a light to take this thing seriously. And we are called, okay, to focus on walking according to God's spirit, God's spirit, rather than on defeating evil spirits. This is why we don't spend time preaching evil spirits. This is a, a once off. You will not see me again and again promoting demonic thing. It is no, but it's because I know I dwell and I hang around intercessors. I hang around men and women that pray. So you have got to be a light of these things. We must remember the word of the words um, in first John 4, 4, little children. You are from God and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We have already overcome the spiritual force of evil as followers of Christ. God's power in us is greater than the power of the evil in this world. When we trust in Christ, his power is sufficient for every spiritual battle we face, including any demonic forces we may encounter. Every Christian, every Christian is a target of principalities and power. It's either you stop them or they stop you. When you are not prayerful, prayer is our weapon. Prayer is our weapon. When you are not prayerful, you become a prey to these evil forces of darkness. But as you engage in prayer against the enemy, against principalities, against powers, the devil will flee from your household forever. Principalities and powers are not invisible spirits. They are also agents, human agents. Remember I said the enemy is a spirit. So is God. The enemy is a spirit and so is God. So God dwells in us and the enemy also tries to find those that he can dwell in, those that he can use. All right. So uh, the human agents, the human agents, the, 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 the people that he uses, okay, is agents. They are those who worship Satan totally, is agents. They are found in every sphere of life, in your homes, in uh, wherever. They are found there. That is why we must be prayerful. We must not give place to the devil. We must be, we must be, be offensive Christian who take the battle to the camp of the enemy. The enemy, the enemy is not human beings. Remember, it is the enemy, the devil. Don't let the devil push you around in life. Push back with prayers. Take back all that the devil has stolen from you and be free. Amen? Then, we are in a battle in this world. We are in a battle, a spiritual warfare battle. We may not see it. We might for forget it's there. But the enemy would love nothing more than to fill our minds with discouragement, defeat. That's the battle. So I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm not trying to promote the enemy. I am trying to bring an alertness to everyone. If you are a believer who is living like salt and light in a dark world, you won't go for long without encountering spiritual warfare through obstacles, attacks. He will hell in your direction. And though we can't stop his cruel attacks, he's very cruel. We can't stop his cruel attack. We don't have to let him win. This is why when we pray, we pray aggressively like me. I like praying aggressively. I always feel that he does not sit down and wait for me and grab my things nicely. He's very aggressive. He's very always on the attack. All right? And so God reminds us in this world to stay away of the 
enemy's schemes, to live a late in this world and to stay close to him. So we are only trying to be alert. God gives specific instructions in this world. He gives us all we need to stand strong in this life and have victory over the battlefields of our mind, our heart, and soul. Yet all too often we rest through busy. We are busy. Full, you know, the days are full. There is no time to read. There is no time for devotions. You know, sometimes we are ill-equipped. We are unprepared or simply not aware of what we are up against or who the real enemy is. The forces of darkness don't wait for us to be ready for their attacks. Have you ever sat down and waited for a problem to arrive? No, it just the problems just come. They are ruthless, determined, and cunning. The devil could not care less if we feel prepared or prayed up for, the, for our day. In fact, he prefers we are not. That's why the problem just suddenly happened. He doesn't wait for you to be ready. No. But in a broken, dark world, how can we really know if we are facing the if we are facing the expected difficulties of life as compared to true spiritual warfare attacks of the enemy. How can we? Jesus himself told us that in this life we would experience troubles. He says that. John chapter 16 verses 33. We know this to be true. And though many times we may not fully know who or what is behind the struggles, we can be assured that God equips us for battle. And he instructs us to live alert. Spiritual warfare is not giving the devil more attention or focusing too much on his evil ways. No, it's not. Biblical warfare is making ourselves more attentive to what God is doing and remembering to stand firm and letting him fight our fearless battles. Let God fight for us. We don't want to be the ones fighting. We want him to fight, but we are aware of the enemy's schemes. This, there is power through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. His word and in prayer and we can be confident that he is always with us leading our way and covering us from behind that is the God I save so now what are the signs I'm just gonna look at them quickly five I don't know if I'm gonna finish the five because we must be done by 6 45 all right but let's let's try so what are the signs that you are in a spiritual warfare and how do you fight it? What are the signs? There are many, there are many ways we may be fighting spiritual battles in our lives and the world today. But let's look at some examples from scripture that may reveal you and I are under a spiritual attack. Number one, number one sudden or extreme onslaught of various troubles, losses, and trials. A sudden or extreme onslaught of various troubles, losses, and trials. This is a ruthless attack that Satan use often brings against us believers. It seems to come out of nowhere. It's just one thing after another. It's hard to even see straight. You feel your life is suddenly spinning out of control. Suddenly it's like nothing is working out. Job's life is an example to us of what this may be like. Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. Go and read that. Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, the devil, the devil himself went to God to ask him if he could torment Job, thinking he would try to lead him away from the Lord through the many struggles he faced. That's what happened there. As we know from the book of Job, this righteous man stood strong. Though it seemed he was losing everything dear to him, he knew, Job knew, that God held him secure through all the loss and the hardships around. God will never, get me here, 
God will never allow the enemy to have full control. To, he doesn't have the final say over our lives. I said it even yesterday. He has got to get permission. He has got to get permission. And God will look at you, what he has prepared you for, whether you are ready to be able to stand the storm headed your way. So the devil is not just out of control. No, God will never allow that. Nothing has ever happened in the domain of your life that God has never authorized. He will allow it because he trusts that you will still stand. Hallelujah. That is the God we serve. God has got the final say. We may face battles and attacks in this world, but we can trust in our mighty God to be our shelter through it all. So that is number one. And number two, attacks of physical danger. Attacks of physical danger. Here we are talking about illnesses. We are talking about life-threatening losses. Attacks of physical dangers, illnesses, sicknesses, diseases. Life-threatening loss. We know from God's way that the enemy wants nothing more than to steal, to kill, and to destroy our lives. And we all love the scripture where God has shown it to us openly. We all love it. It's John 10, 10. He has shown it to us, but God has get, come to give us a life and life in abundance. So he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is in John 10, 10. He is a thief. He is a thief. He is a rolling lion and he preys on God's people, you and I. He, desire, he desires to silence our voices and take us out of this world to shut off the light of God's love and hope through Christ. That is what he wants to do. Many of us may have experienced near-death experiences, sudden and terrible illnesses, or holding loved ones who were at the brink of heaven. And yet God intervene and yet God intervened to keep us here longer he intervenes he intervenes because he can see that you have got a job to fulfill and so he has assigned you and I a number of years. And so whatever the enemy does, he may bring coronavirus. He may bring cancer. He may bring HIV. He may bring high blood pressure. He may bring diabetes. He may bring whatever he wants. Depress, whatever. He will not win. He will not win. Our God is a miracle worker. He's our healer. Jehovah Rapha. 2,000 years ago, he dealt with our sicknesses at the cross of Calvary. There is nothing that he never dealt with, including the so-called coronavirus. God already saw it. Nothing shocks him. Nothing surprises him. And so the Bible reminds us that our, our times are in his hands. We can be confident that he knows every day we are to be here on earth and he will keep us and our loved ones safely in his care until he calls us home in heaven. For me to live, I live for Christ and when I die, it is gain because I go to be with him. There is no reason to fear. Stand strong through prayer and his word. And number three, increased temptation and luring towards sin or wrong choices. Increased temptation and luring towards sin or wrong choices. Remember, we are looking at signs that we are under attack. We are looking at signs at, that we are under attack. And number one, we have already said the sudden or extreme onslaught of various troubles. Trouble after trouble. And we have given Job as an example. Problem after problem, suddenly. All right. And number two, we have said the sudden attack of physical danger, illnesses, life-threatening. John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And number three, we are now looking at increased temptation and luring towards sin or wrong choices. Though we live with daily struggles and temptations all around us, all around us, many times there are spiritual attacks on our lives that put us at greater risk to go astray. 
It is a battle, a ruthless one, and the enemy will fight hard against us. He desires not only to bring us down, but also all those around us. He desires not only to bring us down, did you hear? Not only to bring us down, but even those around you, your friends, your families. That is what he wants. He loves to see news, news stories splashed across headlines of believers who are falling. That is him. He likes it. The giants falling. Hallelujah. Hmm? Commercial break. Hey, thank you for allowing me a commercial break. Running against time. All right? So he loves, he loves, he loves to lure us down. He loves uh, disunity among his Christians and wants nothing more than to break up families and every relationship we hold. He loves disunity because he knows that where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. So you will come and bring confusion suddenly in the church. Disunity. So that you are not speaking the one voice. He loves to see that. We must stand strong and stay aware. Don't give him a foothold into your life. Don't give him even an inch of room. He will come in and wreak havoc and try to lead us astray faster than we even know what happened. Suddenly you don't know what happened. You were all fine. Suddenly the friendship is no longer there. You were all fine in agreement. Suddenly, you are no longer on the same page. That is the enemy. Often, when we find ourselves weary, hmm, already weakened, we are on his radar. Jesus himself is our greatest example of this when he faced the devil's temptation in the wilderness. That is Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Hmm? He was fasting. He was hungry. He was physically weakened and tired. And of course, the enemy jumped on that time to bring on the temptations to, uh, to a greater degree than ever. When he was weak, when he was fasting, one sleep up is all he was looking for. One wrong move, one yes to sin. But Jesus stood strong and resisted his attacks. Every single one, our example. Jesus did not walk on cloud nine, my brother, my sister. He was here on earth, human as you and me. And he resisted each single attempt, you know, to worship the enemy. He spoke God's word out aloud. He held fast to the truth and stepped over Satan's vicious lies and attacks. And he leads us to the same, he leads us to the same today, that we ought to speak the word of God, the word of God. Don't be taken unaware when you start sensing strong pulls away from God's truth uh, and ways. You can know who is at the bottom of it. It can only be the enemy. And number four, feelings of overwhelming despair and darkness and fear. I think I must stop here. I must stop here. Maybe we have do, we've we've done too much. We've got two to finish. Let me see how long. Mm -mm, this is long. I think let me break us up here today. We are looking at the signs that we are under attack, and that is um, signs that we are under attack. Me and you, and we have handled the first. Three. So we have handled sudden or extreme onslaught of various troubles and trials. We have looked at attacks of physical danger, illnesses, life-threatening and loss. And then we have looked at the third one, which is increased temptation and luring towards sin or wrong choices. So we'll look at these three. Uh, Nandipa, please take... Uh, Take, uh, what is it? And uh, We have stopped at number three, so do not post the other two. Please stop on number three. We want people to join us tomorrow. Uh, they can get number four and number five. So only post up to number three. 
that is my awesome, amazing PA, God sent angel, Nandipa. She does a lot for me. She makes appointments. She phones for me. She follows up for me. She's a God sent angel into my life. She's the one that assists me with all the notes. So this is where we are going to stop. So let us go before the Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless you today for your word. Thank you for taking us through the word. We thank you that, Lord, the Bible is a book full of you, our Father, full of your works, full of your deeds. Lord, even as we are looking into this word, we are thanking you because, Lord, you are making us a light of the enemy's tricks, uh, the enemy's things. Father, we thank you that though he may form a weapon, though he may form a weapon against each one of us, Father, it will not prosper. We thank you that, Lord, the battles that we face, you have already won them for us. Thank you, Father, for showing us through, that through prayer we can be able to defeat the enemy. And so, Lord, we bless you because, Lord, you love us so much that you will never allow the enemy to be out of control. And you will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we cannot handle. You will never allow us to face storms that you have ne not signed off on. We thank you that, Father, you know us very well. And you know, Father, what kind of storms we can be able to face. Father, we thank you for the battle belongs to you. Victory belongs to Jesus. And we enjoy in that victory. Father, today we thank you that indeed we can be praising. We can use praise as our weapon to fight the enemy. We pray, Father God, thanking you that you will see us through. That, Lord, indeed things can be difficult, but at the end of it, your name will be glorified. We thank you that out of our mistakes, you have got a message for someone mighty God. Lord, we submit all those that are sick. We submit those that have had sudden problems after problem. We submit, Father God, every issue unto you. That, Lord, may you help your children. May you deliver your children. May you heal those that are sick. Thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. You sent your word and you healed our diseases. Heal the diseases. We pray coming against every problem that we may be facing. Whether it is in our homes. Whether it is at our workplaces. Whether it is in our relationship. In our churches. Whatever it is my God. Thank you that you will fight those battles. Thank you that you are a God who loves order. You are a God who loves unity. And so we are trusting you that Lord. Despite whatever we are facing through going through you will see us through love you lord because our marriages were ordained by you and so father we thank you for the many reconciliations that you are bringing you are a relational god you bring man and woman together and so father those that are facing troubles right now you will see them through those that have been crying that they want to enter into a relationship that will mount to marriage lord i am praying that you open a door of marriage those that have been in relationship in and out you alone you will help them father god they will be able to meet the right one the right one the true one the one that they should have in the mighty name of jesus thank you father thank you that the battle indeed belongs to you the battle indeed belongs to you you alone are our god every temptation that we may face Father, every decision that we may want to make, Lord, you will help us. Whatever temptation comes our way, when the enemy dangles a carrot in front of us, may we be able to resist him. May we speak your word and resist the devil. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. May the God, may the God that we serve help you to stand firm. Holding your shield of faith high in order to extinguish the flames, flaming arrows of the evil one. May his word go forth with truth and justice so that you will triumph over the enemy in this world. May you be in a position to stand who you are in him, to know who you are 
in him. Greater is he who is in you than the one in the enemy. May you be blessed. May those crooked places be made straight for you. May the Lord bless you and may he bless those that bless you. Have an awesome day. I will see you again tomorrow as we continue from number four. Signs that you are under attack. Shalom, shalom.